time now for The Clash. So, this week in Dublin, five people were left injured in a knife attack, including three children and two adults. The attack provoked riots in the capital city of the Republic of Ireland last night, where people were seen looting shops, vehicles were set on fire. Yesterday's events were just terrible. Between the awful attack, which happened at 1.30 in the afternoon, and then the subsequent disorder, uh, riot and looting in the city in our city centre. It's just disgraceful scenes from start to finish. Uh, overall, we have 34 arrests. And last night, police branded the protesters far right, as did the media as well. But is this right? Let's get the reaction now from the president of the Irish Freedom Party, Herman Kelly, plus academic and ethnographer. Lisa McKenzie. Welcome both. Thank you very much. Um, Herman, I'll start with you. Is it right to just label people far right? I mean, was there some truth to that? Well, I will tell you, just look, uh, is it the part of the police commissioner to give marks out of 10 and to uh, give his opinion on the political views of uh, different people, especially when people weren't involved. Uh, like the Irish state, I, I would argue, is incredibly authoritarian. This is a state which is looking to introduce anti-free speech laws at the minute, even though there's libel laws and anti-laws against uh, incitement to violence, etc., already on the books. And secondly, this is a government which only two and a half years ago was in, like, had a draconian lockdown laws, which imposed restrictions on travel and going to work and seeing your family on many, many people. So I would say, look, they want to shut down the debate. They know they have no arguments in favour of open borders and mass unvetted immigration. So they want to shut down debate by hmm. calling people names, but they don't have arguments to, to justify their position. OK, now, Lisa, I'll come to you on this, because I suppose the argument would be that politicians recognise that they've really badly messed up and potentially endangered people's lives and created a situation where people don't feel safe, and now they're, they're trying to shift the focus and say, if you disagree with this, you're far right, to deflect from their own shortcomings. I don't think, I don't think you subscribe to that view, though, Lisa, do you? Um, well, I don't think governments and politicians are actually that aware of any damage that they're doing in any country, actually. I think what is happening is we've got neoliberalism that is uh, perhaps coming to an end. Um, and we have definitely got, uh, because of the lack of class politics that perhaps we used to have in our politicians, is gone. What we have got now is we've got identity politics and we definitely have the far right organising all over Europe. That is a fact. The far right are organising all over Europe and what they are doing is they are organising around working class issues, um, particular things like housing and homelessness. Now, that's because the left has sort of abandoned working class people and abandoned um, the issues of working class people. But we still need to be honest about the far right who are organising. Um, we've seen it in... Uh, Holland this week, we're seeing it all over Europe. You said yourself, actually, that you can pinpoint parts of the far right which are definitely politically organising. So we can't deny okay. that that's happening. OK, Herman, come back to that then. You know, the far right have been mobilising maybe in Ireland and the far right are, are mobilising around Europe. That's, that, that's the view that we just heard there. <laughs> I feel like the psychologist, you know, that you've seen the cartoon where the guy says, are the far right and are they in the room with us now as they're talking to a patient? And like these people, like the so-called left, they have abandoned the working class decades ago. Now it's all about the woking class and their agenda. It's all about the men have penis, the women have penises, uh, who can go into the toilet, uh, what colour are you? Uh, what do you call your dog? It's all it's all silly stuff that they that they they talk about now. But I will tell you what that uh, in regards to working class, it's people and it's parties like the Irish Freedom Party who are standing up for working people who go to work in the morning and they're mm -hmm. sick to the back teeth of watching, like. Like, would you believe the population of Ireland has gone up by 42%, 1.5 million 
in less than 30 years. Mm -hmm. And Irish people who get up and go to work are watching people who have never who have never contributed a cent to the country coming in, lying about their identity, saying that they don't have a passport, not revealing their mm -hmm. any criminal history that they may have, and uh, getting free house, free medical care, free welfare. Working people are saying, "What's in this for me? Okay. And why should it? Why should I be paddy last in my own country?" That's a okay. bit unfair. Oh, all right, I, I can see I shaking your head there, Lisa. Go on. No, listen, you know, I, I'm, I come from a working class family. I come from a mining community. I remember the 1970s and the early 80s when the far right was mobilising in our communities around things like homeless, like housing, poor housing, like poor wages, um, not being able to get decent jobs. I remember the far right mobilising. It was awful. It was not good. Well, is this As like that? Talk, 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 so I'll, I'll stick with you, Lisa. You know th that's important. Then, so you you remember, you know what the the, the far right as it was known then. I, I mean, remember, is this like that I then? Because if the it National isn't, then you know. Go on. Listen, I remember the National Front. My, I've got a mixed race son. I remember being spat at in the street because my son was mixed race. Mm. And listen, I am working class. I don't want working class people to be hoodwinked by the far right who have no interest in working class issues. They have got interest in their own ideologies. I also say that the left are not any better either. Mm. So for me, this is about class politics, and I'm interested in what happens to working class people, and I don't want the far right hoodwinking them because they're the only game in town. The one thing I will, the one thing I will, Let well, we'll absolutely agree on that. Is a, a lot of this, a lot of this comes down to a fundamental lack of good leadership right across the board, right? And that that is actually what's behind a heck of a lot of this. But Herman, you're itching. Go on. Let's get let's get down to the nitty gritty here. There's about. 100 people maximum in Ireland who would be classed as far right, who like skinheads, who like Adolf Hitler and are obsessed by Jews. There's only about uh, 100 people in the whole country who are like that. It's culturally very different from a lot of Europe. And that's why probably the whole thing about immigration is coming. We're, we're kind of coming late to the game about the consequences. But I will tell you what, look, we have had all this discussion, not a, a cent about the, the, the cause of what happened last night, which is that five people were stabbed in the middle of the day in a, in a street in Dublin by a, an Algerian. And I, I don't know, was he here for two days or 20 years? It doesn't matter. Last Herman, I'm going to just, a case just of come in and just say, Ashley just important Murphy. to say, yeah, I, I, get, I get the sentiment of what you're saying, and anyone who's got eyes in their head who has been on social media or who has been reading the media will, will quite possibly, that will not be the first time they've heard that. But it is important for me to do my job and say, this individual... It's all alleged, and he has not been charged with anything, right? So exactly. uh, that's, yes, that's, that's that. True. But but the the, the wider oh, point okay. there, Herman, the wider point, I think, is that people potentially in Ireland have felt as though they've not been listened to. Ordinary people, you know, middle-aged women who are who are out on the street doing a march, saying we don't really want a load of young men in a hotel in our local area, and they've been called far right. And I think that's I think that's really wound people up, Herman. Like these rallies, they had over 300 rallies in Ireland last year. They're all very peaceful, uh, no problems. But the people who went there, very often mothers with buggies, uh, ordinary people. There was no kind of you would think, oh, these look like a, a like a tasty set of people walking along with boots and stuff like that. There was no people like that, and yet all they did was get called names, and and all they had okay. to do was take accusations from the left wing press. And, uh, oh, all right. you know, uh, we've had a number of murders that the rate of murder and sexual assault has gone up very sharply in the last num in the last number of years. Like, the population has incre increased That's a good point. That's a good There's point for me to bring Lisa in for the final word services. on this, Herman, because, because, Lisa, is there some truth to that, which is if people feel fundamentally unsafe and a driving factor yeah. behind why they feel unsafe is because a, a lot of new people have just arrived in their local community and some crimes have been committed. You know, does that really make you far right being concerned about that? I think people are concerned about their communities, absolutely. Can you blame... I mean, working-class people are also immigrant people as well. But what can we really blame, you know, 
people coming in who are working class who have got very little power can you blame them for what is happening in our country we have no bus services we've got no housing housing we're in the worst housing crisis since victorian times we need to blame the right people for this mm. and for me the right people are those in government okay all right, look, really strong stuff from both of you, that. I've enjoyed it. We could have carried that on for a lot longer, but we're, we're bang out of time. So thank you very much. I'll chat to you both again soon. That was uh, the president of the Irish Freedom Party, Herman Kelly, plus academic and ethnographer Lisa McKenzie. Look, who do you agree with? OK, should the police in Dublin have called rioters far right? Elliot on X, the artist formerly known as Twitter, says, of course not. It's completely ridiculous. Rioting over stabbing children is not a far right position. Chris also says a protest by concerned citizens slash parents etc was hijacked by a tiny minority of gangsters and thieves who wanted to steal attack police nothing far right at all Alison says the papers called them far left they were angry dubliners there we go all right well your verdict is in now so 6.5 percent of you think that the police were right to call the rioters Far right, I mean, a whopping 93.5% of you say that the rioters were in fact not far right. So, in this sense anyway, the people have spoken.